right, everybody, I am so happy this week to share with you another installment from our library. I recorded a series of interviews earlier this year as we were just dropping into our sequestration during COVID times. And so this conversation with Dr. Samantha Larkin, she's a naturopathic doctor, was really valuable then, and I know it's going to continue to be. So I brought this one back to share with you this week as we discuss how cortisol can affect us, that stress hormone that affects us in so many other areas of our lives and how naturopathic doctors address healing and balance through the therapeutic order. And so I hope you enjoy and you can connect with Dr. Sam at her website, naturecuredoctor.com. I'll have her links in the show notes. And she is also on Facebook and Instagram, dropping some insights and wisdom at naturecuredoctor. Living in a stressful world doesn't mean you have to give up on happiness. Instead, you can shift your perspective of stress and discover how to live your life in flow. Welcome to Happified. I'm your host, Susie Vine. Join me for inspiration and interviews with folks who are shining their light in the world in the areas of positive mindset, health, and wellness. I'm so happy to have you here. Hey there, friends. Are you looking for tools to resolve stress, reliable information to support your whole health, tips to help you motivate yourself and identify when motivation is fading before it happens, implementation, accountability, and someone to remind you to celebrate even the small successes where you could find tools you can use and accountability in a community that cheers you on where information about health trends and lifestyle is reliable and straightforward. I know that you have what it takes to up-level your health habits and restore your resilience. You just might need a boost to start building momentum. I've designed a membership where you can choose the level of support you'd like to get every month, whether it's tuning in to connect with like-minded change makers or getting personalized support with one-on-one coaching to help you chart your path to success. Check out the link for the Velocity membership at happifiedlife.com. Special pre-launch pricing is now available for premium support, but you can jump in for free if you just want to test the waters. I look forward to seeing you inside. All right. Today, I am so very happy to have with me a fantastic doctor of naturopathic medicine. Dr. Samantha Larkin is here to talk with us about how we can stay resilient and support ourselves in times of stress and when to recognize how to find the best sort of care to support us. So we're going to cover some really great um, topics through the course of our conversation. But first, let me say that for this material and everything that I've been sharing throughout the reset, that this is not medical advice that you should apply to yourself. We are not here to prescribe or diagnose anything. We are simply making general recommendations and you should always work with your medical practitioner to make sure that something is suitable for you. So with that in mind, Dr. Samantha Larkin, I'm so happy to have you with me today. I'm so pleased to join you, Susie. So um, let me just start in in this conversation, perhaps as as we've talked about um, some people might not be familiar with what's the difference between a naturopathic doctor and medical doctor and other types of uh, medical practitioners. Yeah, but it's a great question. So uh, I went to four year med- medical school and the you know, first two years are more so you know, biochemistry, anatomy, physiology, something similar to what you would see in an MD school. The second two years are the clinical years and those have a different focus for us. So we are learning more preventative medicine, more, much more nutrition, more herbal medicine, and other modalities that are considered more traditional. So we really meld the conventional world well with the traditional and ancient ways of healing. So you're getting a huge um, amalgam of different treatment methods with a naturopathic doctor. And I really appreciate that you're pointing out that it is traditional medicine. Um, We tend to see it kind of put in the category of alternative medicine. And I appreciate that even complementary is becoming more 
widely accepted and used than alternative. Because just because it was really put aside for only the last couple of decades, maybe 50 or 60 years, um, you know, finally science is catching up with what evidence is borne out for, in some cases, up to thousands of years. So I love that this is becoming more widely acceptable and available, right. I should say. Totally agree. So in your practice, in supporting people who find themselves under stress, um, what are some ways you help them recognize it? Or how do you discover this is an issue that's affecting your patients? Great question. So a lot of patients come in with uh, headaches. They come in with tension, pain. They come in with a you know, variety of different concerns. And when we actually sit down and talk, it just comes down to stress and to how all of these daily stressors, life events are just compiling and and what i find is that having a good way to measure that is super important with certain types of patients so what i like to do is first look at um, cortisol levels cortisol is your stress hormone so to speak and in a healthy person who doesn't have a lot of stress going on in their life or someone who responds well to stress, that curve is going to be, it's going to be more of a bell, bell curve. So it's going to go up in the morning to wake you up. This is an arousal hormone. So it'll go up in the morning around 9 a.m. and then it'll slowly come down. And what we see with patients who are, you know, really stressed out or have a lot going on or aren't handling stress well is that they'll either be bottomed out, their cortisol, they won't have energy to deal with these, with life. Um, they'll have trouble getting out of bed. Or we'll have patients who are, you know, super elevated and they just always feel revved up. They can't calm themselves down. Um, what I also see is that, that, spike will happen later in the day. So their body is telling them to wake up at nighttime and they get the surge of energy and all these things that they wanted to do, but they can't go to sleep. And so that is starting to compound their problems with stress as well because they're not sleeping. So, so that's the first place I like to do. We do a uh, four point salivary cortisol. So we just take a saliva sample at four points during the day, um, spaced out evenly, and we record that, that curve and see what that looks like. So that gives us a ton of information. The other thing I like to do is um, I like to take an objective scale of stress. And there's a really good one that we use as medical practitioners. It's called the Holmes Ray um, Stress Scale. And it just gives an inventory of different life events and like such as changes in a job or marriage or divorce or even things as small as like a car loan. It goes through all of that on this, on this scale and gives an ob objective value to each of them. So you can really um, monitor someone's stress in an objective way and you can monitor their stress from appointment to appointment. So it's really great to have those kind of tools. That way you're not just like, okay, well, on a scale of one to 10, how stressed are you? That's going to be different for everybody. Yes. And I appreciate um, you're starting to bring attention to how in-depth these um, consultations are because when I've visited a naturopathic doctor, the initial visit can be 90 minutes, maybe even longer, depending on what you're there to address. So they yeah. really, and it's, and it can be funny. Some of these questions seem unrelated or off topic, but it's all connected, which is the beauty of this world of naturopathic medicine, of functional medicine, of these other modalities that are starting to become more mainstream. Absolutely. And I love that you, that you made that reference as well, because yes, they can be quite lengthy, the, the, especially the initial appointments with an, a naturopathic doctor. But I've learned, I've learned that if you just let your patient talk, They'll tell you every, que every question that you are going to ask them, they will tell you. It might be out of order, but sometimes it's nice just to have a practitioner listen to you like that. That is so that's true. Yeah, that's what we do is we listen. We really listen. And we do take account the whole body, mind, spirit, 
everything's connected. So in a case where you find someone has the issues with, with the cortisol being out of balance, um, how do you begin to, what are some general recommendations that you find are supportive in helping to come back into balance? Absolutely. So, you know, if someone, it depends on how whacked out your cortisol rhythm is, and it can take a long time. And this, this is slow medicine. This isn't your fast, quick fix kind of thing, um, but it is very effective. One of the Things I like to explain to my patients is we will treat on a least invasive to most invasive therapeutic order is what we call it. And so what we'll do is we'll start with uh, removing obstacles to cure. So what is in the way of your optimal health? And a lot of these stressors are just those things. So you have a toxic job with toxic co-workers that you can't stand, that job might have to go to even put a dent in your, in, in starting to build your health. So we start there and um, then we start to go through the foundations of health, which are great nutrition, um, you know, exercise and movement, things like that. Do you have a support system? Are there people around you that are gonna help you cope with the stressors that you can't get rid of? Um, and then when those people aren't available, what do you have in place within yourself to cope with those stressors? So meditation, yoga, movement, um, you know, what, what me and my partner do all the time now is garden together. And that's been such a great source of bonding and um, just meditative for us both. So that's a great stress reliever. Um, these things that you, you know, maybe you can do with your support system, but things that you could do just personally that you don't have to look to anyone else for that self-soothing. So um, I try to go through those things with my patients first. Um, and then, you know, making sure that my patients aren't over abusing alcohol or abusing drugs to cope with that stress because that is compounding and it won't obviously help in the long run. So addressing those things, then we like to get into higher order interventions such as new, new, um, nutritional supplements, vitamins, herbal medicine, things like that. And if that's not working, then we might go to talking about, all right, is this really stress or is this starting to move into the realm of anxiety, depression? When's the last time you thought about killing yourself? These are things that we ask because we want to know. Um, so sometimes we have to, you know, ch check for red flags with our patients and sometimes those are there. So it really depends on the, it depends on the severity of the stress and how our patients are dealing with it. Yeah, I think that's such a great point. And I've heard it um, compared to peeling the onion. You really have to work through layers yeah. sometimes to get to the root of a situation, you know, in order to resolve it. But all of these provide such great support and boost our resilience so that we can meet stress. Because as you said, stress is just going to happen sometimes. We can address different stressors and minimize those. And that just supports us so that we have the resilience to meet stress when it gets served up, because that's just going to be a part of life. It's what, what I compare it to. And I think a lot of functional practitioners will compare it to is that bucket um, analogy is you all of these stressors are filling your bucket, but when it starts to overflow, how do we talk about how to remove things from the bucket so that it doesn't overflow next time? Exactly. Yep. The bucket's been getting a lot of use this week. I think it's really oh, helpful, yeah. like a really good visual because, because also the frog in the, in the pot of boiling water, right? Oh, yeah. We don't tend to recognize how much weight we're carrying until we take a pause. Maybe yep. we go on vacation and we realize 
wow, how does it feel to not set an alarm and let my body regulate its own sleep schedule? Uh Or to get out of what could be a toxic work environment and say, wow, I am so much more fun for my partner to be with. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So, so it does, it, there's a lot of trickle and spillover effect in terms of, and that's really the beauty again of the traditional medicine is, is looking at that whole picture. And, and I've said also earlier in this week, you know, as an example in massage, people tend to come in and they say, I have pain in my shoulders and expect work to be on their shoulders. However, the source of that could be muscle tension across the front of the chest. Absolutely. So that source is not always directly related and people, it's easy to miss the cause when the result can seem removed. So that's really the beauty of getting an outside perspective and somebody who has this amazing, you know, ability to draw from different modalities and traditions of medicine and healing to put together something that's really customized for you. Exactly. And that's, you know, then that's the thing that really sets us apart is um, our kind of doctor, we don't have protocols. We don't have things that are just already in place in a binder in the hospital for, for us to just give our patients, no matter who they are or where they're from or what their story is. Uh, we really can pull from a toolbox that's is vast of different therapies and really personalize our treatment plans. Yes, and, and one other thing that stood out as you were talking is um, you were talking then as you go through the therapeutic order, you might get to, and this isn't the very beginning of the scale, but along the process, it might be necessary to bring in some nutritional supplements or use some herbs for support. And I really love the ability in naturopathic medicine to look at a whole different set of testing and assessments that medical doctors don't tend to look at really examining the function of the body in every facet and recognizing, um, you know, imbalance in metabolism or, you know, all of these little things that they just tend to be going, as you say, symptom equals, you know, prescription or diagnosis instead of really recognizing, again, where it starts along the chain, how that affects what, you know, hormone balance or function or physical ability you know, to support the whole body. Yeah, we're really, we're really good at fine tuning things. Whereas one practitioner in a conventional setting might only order a cortisol level on someone they suspect has a disease like Cushing syndrome. We're actually using it as a tool to help people mitigate stress, revamp their, what we call our HPA access, which is just your brain to adrenal access. And um, it's really a great tool. So we, we take these tests and we kind of use them to their full advantage. Your body's telling you a lot. You can, you know, you can just, if you just slow down and listen to it. Yeah. Yes. And, and that's another thing um, that I like with the timing of this and why I really kind of put this together quickly on the fly once I knew exactly what I wanted to share with people is because I hope that in this time, while the pause button has been pushed, you know, and we're out of our normal cycle, be that commuting to a job or whatever it is that usually occupies our time and attention. And even if we're still busy working at home, we can look for ways to build in a self-care practice to really get in touch with how we're feeling and how we want to be feeling, how we want to be able to engage in the world and start to cultivate the habits to support us being the person that we want to be without restriction. I love that. And I think that's so important. And it's something that I wish was more prevalent right now. And I'm so glad that you're bringing light to that, especially at this time. I have a lot of friends and patients who right now have turned to alcohol as just a way to self-soothe because of the just boredom, stress, things like that. Instead, it's so important to take this time where we have, you know, we have slowed down, hopefully most of us a little bit to realize, okay, I don't want to sit with myself for, for a second. What's going on? Is this a stressor that I haven't identified? So I think it's so important what you're doing. And I love, love that you're doing this program. 
Thank you. And, and thank you for that point too. Um, a lot of times unhealthy habits come from avoidance. And so that's really a really essential part of this whole self-reflection process and trying to decide. We'll be talking later um, in the week about bringing in the emotions that we want to be fostering. You know, we get to choose our own adventure. We are not subject to the influences of the world. So we get to be an active participant. Love it. Yeah, wonderful. Um, is there anything else that you would share um, maybe in terms of general health and support? You mentioned nutrition. Um, I talked with a nutritionist who's an advocate of whole food plant-based and plant-based isn't for everyone. Some people thrive on animal protein. So I'm not saying that that's the way to be. It's certainly not the way that I can commit to eating, but it, general rules of thumb and you mentioned activity too. Any other um, favorites of yours that you recommend to people just Oh yeah, nutrition is totally one of my favorites. And yes, exactly what you said. There is no one size fits all model for anyone, but I believe as Americans, we should be eating less meat. We are eating way too much meat. And, um, you know, I think it, when it comes to that, choosing our sources wisely is so important. And I'm very much an advocate of, you know, grass fed, grass finished meats, pastured eggs, make sure you're getting organic milks, organic cheeses when you can. Um, and beyond that, up your veggies. Yes, plant based all the way. Um, less processed foods are going to make you more resilient to stress. They're going to support your immune system. And what I always love to tell people is eat your colors. Like my favorite thing to talk about, eat your colors. When you're putting together your plate, it should look beautiful. And if it doesn't, chances are you have too many starchy things on there and you need some color. Um, so yeah, I think that's huge for me. When it comes to movement, it can be a scary topic for some people. They, you know, perhaps have never felt athletic. Movement can look like anything. It can look like a walk around the block for some patients. It can look like getting outside of your front door and walking to the sidewalk. That might be where you need to start when it comes to movement. Um, a lot of patients are scared that I, well, I can't run a mile. I can't do that. I can't. And it's, it's a lot of self-doubt. So what I like to say to people is, you know what, can you get to the end of your street today? And then it builds confidence and they go, yeah, I can do that. I can go around the block. And then all of a sudden they can't stop walking or they can't stop running because they're just loving it. So when I say movement and exercise, I do really mean whatever someone can tolerate. And, um, you know, it could be yoga, it could be swimming, perhaps, you know, walking and running is too difficult on your joints, things like that. So I really encourage whatever movement possible. And that is so great for helping to regulate that HPA access where that cortisol comes into play. Awesome. And thank you for that because I think people need more permission to just take on the activity that feels approachable to them and naturally explore how that ability grows. Because and certainly in Southern California, but in today's society, it seems like that divide gets further and further apart between sedentary people and very active people who are triathletes, you know, yeah. and people look at that example and say, I could never do that. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't start there. Exactly. Is my point. You might decide after a couple of years of training that you can't stop moving, like you say, and you might find yourself there to your own surprise. But exactly. celebrate those small wins, walk to the end of the block or around the block, get an accountability buddy is another thing that I, I really advocate because it helps. It's easy to psych ourselves out of the game, but it's a lot easier for us to cheer other people on. And so if you've got a cheerleader in your corner, I think that's really, really helpful. It's huge and it plays into that support system as well that helps us mitigate stress. Um, and what I and what I'd like to kind of end on is, you know, I like to tell my patients every day is a page in the book. You might not put anything in today's page, but tomorrow and the next day, maybe you'll put one thing. Maybe it's you added a little greens to your dinner 
or, oh, you walked around the block or you walked for 20 minutes. Those are all just things to put in the book. And once we have a full book, that's the accumulation of what our health can be. And so I know a lot of people who can be a little fatalist. Well, if I don't do this every day this week, then it's not worth it. But I like to encourage just, you know, every, every little, like, like you said, every little win is, is huge when it comes to your health. Absolutely. Absolutely. And getting a good cheerleader in your corner, which is why I'm so glad Dr. Sam was able to hop on the call with us today. Thank Thank you so so much. much. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Susie. It was a pleasure. Awesome. It was a lot of fun for me too. So thanks for making some time and best of luck to you in your practice and staying healthy and well and um, cultivating, you know, that spreading that word. I'm so glad you're out here doing your work. Take care. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in today. Check out the show notes for any links we mentioned. To learn more about living life with less stress and more flow, visit happifiedlife.com. And if you found value in today's episode, make sure you subscribe to catch the next one and leave a review to help fellow pod surfers find Happified. Until next time, keep on shining.